Binder jetting is an additive manufacturing process for metal, other materials too, that involves no melting. It's becoming increasingly important as a broader range of manufacturers applies additive to part production. I'm Pete Zielinski with Additive Manufacturing Media. And I'm Stephanie Hendrickson. In this video, we'll talk about what binder jetting is, how it works, materials and applications for this process, and potential advantages of using it. Stephanie, start us off. What is binder jetting? Binder jetting is a 3D printing process. It's one of the seven families of additive manufacturing technology, and it involves dropping a liquid binder onto a bed of powdered material to build up what is usually called a green form. So, the starting point, a bed of powder material, could be metal, might be non-metal, we'll get to that in a sec, but a print head goes across this powder bed, jetting a binding agent, jetting a binding agent in the 2D shape of that particular layer of the part, that cross section of the part. It's sintering that completes the process and the sintering step turns that green part into a fully dense, fully solid, strong, hard metal part if metal was the material. But, but let's talk about that. What materials can be used in binder jetting? So binder jetting is probably most commonly associated with metals and it can be used with a variety of those. So cobalt and nickel alloys, aluminum, stainless steels, uh, lots of precious metals. But as you hinted at, binder jetting is also compatible with other types of materials, including ceramics like carbide and even sand. So what types of applications exist for binder jetting? So there is no one particular industry or application that is best known for binder jetting. Instead, uh, binder jetting is being applied broadly. This is a relatively productive, cost-effective 3D printing process for production, and it's succeeding in manufactured parts like machine components or fittings, uh, metallic filters, even wear components made out of hard materials like carbide. You mentioned sand also. So uh, in foundry work, in casting, metal castings are formed oftentimes using cores and cavities made of sand. And those cores in particular can be 3D printed through binder jetting. More complex core forms realized more cost effectively thanks to binder jetting of sand. So range of different possible applications, different possible parts that could be made this way, but when a part is made this way, what, what comes next? What, what post-processing is involved? So at the end of the printing process, all of those delicate green parts are going to be encased in the excess material. So the first step is going to be to get those parts out, to gently remove them and remove any excess powder. If you are printing with sand, making that foundry tooling, that's probably all you'll need to do. That tooling is gonna to be pretty much ready to go off of the printer. But for metal and ceramic parts, there's gonna be a few more steps, notably the sintering process. So your parts need to go into a sintering furnace where they're gonna be heated up and fused together to form those fully dense final parts. Sometimes parts might need to go on for additional processing like hot isostatic pressing for improving their material properties or oftentimes finish machining. Let's talk about reasons to use binder jetting. There are a lot of them. Um, it is a way to 3D print in metal without melting. And so that expands the range of metals that can be easily 3D printed and 3D printed in a more controlled process because there's no phase change. Because there's no melting in the printer, that also often means you don't really need support structures. The parts are gonna be supported by the loose powder during the build and you can nest them in three dimensions so you can pack a lot into a single print. Binder jetting is a way to 3D print with very hard materials, particularly materials that might be prone to stress cracking in a, a different additive process that involved a big temperature change. Another advantage of no heat being applied during 3D printing is that any of that powder that wasn't touched by the binding agent is essentially the same material coming out of the printer as went into it in the first place. So recycling and reusing the material becomes a bit easier. Binder jetting is relatively productive and low cost compared to other methods of additive manufacturing for production. It runs unattended and the lower cost per part brings production 3D printing to a broader class of potential production parts. 
Binder jetting is also closely related to some more conventional manufacturing processes like metal injection molding, or MIM. So if you have a furnace that's suitable for MIM parts, chances are you can probably use it for binder jet parts too. To learn a lot more about binder jetting, including examples of parts that it is succeeding with, see the links in the episode description or visit our website additivemanufacturing.media. Thanks for watching.